I just wanted to say earlier, you mentioned that with the Bitcoin video you made, you got like kind of a weird res- response and you attracted like uh, a different demographic, I guess, to, to your videos. And we recently had a similar experience. Hmm. We made a video Happy called The Earth is oh, Flat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, we, we definitely got some some characters in the comment section there. For sure. Um, but you know, it was just funny to see, like, usually our comments are just like, oh, nice video, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we have people that are commenting, like, oh, in 1960, <laughs> the Antarctic expedition, like, all the, all these things about, like, proof that the Earth is flat. It was just, a like, a funny experience. Yeah, that was definitely yeah. a once-in-a-lifetime once in a lifetime experience, because that was such an interesting, like, a controversial topic, right, I guess. So... I mean, talking about that, I think that's a perfect way to ask also, like, have if you've ever done, I guess, because I mean, I haven't seen every single one of the videos on three blue one brown, right? So I guess the question is, have you ever made a crazy controversial topic? Like, um, like math on something like that? Because because I, I know, like some millennium problems are pretty, you know, controversial to some people, like, especially when you explain it in a certain way. Hmm. So ha- I mean... has there ever been an instance? Math is a wonderful landscape where it's actually probably one of the least controversial areas that you'll find because Very true. the professionals in it, at least, either they like completely agree that something's right or they completely agree that something's wrong or they're like patiently waiting while the jury is out. You can maybe find one or two exceptions to that. Like it's interesting that there was any controversy around like this the proposed solution to the ABC conjecture. But outside of like some very extreme cases, it's it's kind of unparalleled for how much consensus there is. And I think that maps also onto the math education side. So I, I purposefully don't talk about like generally publicly controversial topics. I do think there's a very really big benefit to having some place on the internet that's just living on a different island than all of that, mm-hmm. right? That like people can come together independent of where they sit on other stuff and just like share in a love of math. Um, maybe the closest, one of the earliest videos that I made um, It was talking about a divergent sum. If you add up all the positive powers of two, so one plus two plus four plus eight, on and on, um, there is a sense in which that equals negative one. Um, I probably could have done a much better job explaining what I was getting at with that. But I I thought it's really interesting that, um, well, there's a couple very real senses in which you can try to say that that divergent sum equals negative one. One is to change the metric that you're using. So instead of a Euclidean metric, if you assign distances between rational numbers according to what's called the two-attic metric, which it satisfies a lot of the rules you would want metrics to have. In a very real sense, like it approaches negative one. Another would be the idea that if you like analytically continue um, the, uh, the function one plus x plus x squared on and on and on in the complex plane, and then you see what that analytic continuation equals at the point um, x equals two, it like equals negative one. And so there's like a lot of points where the universe is like pointing towards this idea, even though for the usual metric we put on numbers and the usual definitions of convergence, like this is a totally divergent sum. Clearly, I didn't explain it well at all because there's like a, a, a meaningful number of responses that are like, this is such obvious BS, like, uh, you know, it's just like flat out wrong and like misleading <laughs> and like such evidence that like mathematicians talk nothing but nonsense. Um, <laughs> And people will get very angry, I think, at the when you take divergent sum seriously. Like, if you look at the comment section on, um, it's a very popular number file video where they talk about like the classic one plus two plus three plus four equals negative one twelve. One over twelve, yeah. And you can have yeah. criticisms about how they Nasty. talked about it if you want. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Mathologer uh, had one, one such thing, but um, mm-hmm. the the level of ire in like the comments is not reflective of what any of like the well-intentioned criticisms could like bring to bear on, on that kind of thing. Um, and I, th- I think there's actually something very healthy about in math, taking something that you acknowledge doesn't make sense in existing formalisms, but you're like open yourself to, up to asking, is there a way in which this makes sense? And kind of the purpose of what, that like early video that I made was that sometimes this is what inventing math feels like, is that you start with something that it doesn't make sense. It, it straight up doesn't make sense, but there's, there's little indications that you might want it to make sense. And the act of trying to make something that you want to make sense make sense informs the axioms that you choose and informs the new constructs that you invent. Because um, otherwise, where could they come from? Like, where do axioms come from, right? And it's like mm-hmm. this kind of interesting epistemic question. Um, but but a lot of comments there aren't necessarily interested in epistemic questions. And it's more like, <laughs> you obviously can't add infinitely positive things and get a negative <laughs> yeah. thing. Like that's, uh, there's nothing more obviously true than that. I was like, fair mm-hmm. enough. 
But uh, the the word obvious is always a red flag for fuzzy thinking. Mm-hmm. I st- uh, um, interesting fact about that because you mentioned it in grade 12 I still remember my calculus teacher he used to always make fun of us whenever we used to say the word obvious because yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in especially in, in calculus like sometimes we would say oh this is obviously this he's like what do you mean by obvious and I'm like well if you do it it's, uh, it's clearly this he's like you can never use that word and like he used to get angry at us sometimes simply for using <laughs> the word obvious because depending on who you're asking or what context you're talking about, like, I guess it's not obvious in all, in all cases, right? Yeah, I mean, two reasons you shouldn't, especially for the, like, educational ones, if you're talking to someone and they're coming from a different background, it might not be obvious to them in the way it is to you. Exactly. The yeah. deeper reason is that very few things are actually obvious, and uh, it's, it's usually a sign of um, not wanting to acknowledge how hard something is to explain it with the word obvious mm-hmm. than it is to, like, unpack it. And calculus is rife with these, right? Like the um, intermediate value theorem or something like that. It's like, I've got a continuous function. At some point, it's negative. At some point, it's positive. In between those, it must pass zero, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Is it obvious? <laughs> and like, the, it, the more that you step back on trying to justify why such a statement is obvious, it like forces you into really contemplating what you mean by a word like continuous in a way that's pretty healthy for setting yourself up for like real analysis. So independent of whether you plan to explain it to someone or are trying to empathize with those for whom it might be less obvious, like expunging it from your own vocabulary is good for your own learning. I'm probably guilty of this. I'm sure like someone could look through the videos I've made and find like a billion places where I use the word clearly or obvious in ways that are unhealthy, but uh, it's worth striving for still.